today is the first Friday of Advent. It's also the memorial of St. Francis Xavier. In confession, people say to me, I don't pray as much as I should. To which I reply, how much should you pray? The question usually baffles them because they don't know what the should means beyond a senseless, mindless obligation they wish to avoid. So then I say to them, do you really mean I wish I prayed more than I do? Some will light up at this formulation. Yes, they will say, that is what we mean. And then we will talk about how they might pray more. Sometimes though, people will say, well, I think I should pray more, but I really don't want to because I believe, because I'm afraid of what God will ask me to do. This all too common response reflects the terrible theology of God that is rampant in parts of Catholicism and Protestantism. This theology says that God is always angry with us individually, always disappointed, always ready to punish, and always ready to compel us to do things we will hate. Somehow, this line of thought says, if we don't suffer a lot on this earth, we cannot get to heaven. And even if we go to heaven, we will have to go through purgatory first. This appalling theology can, in fact, be pieced together from individual scripture verses here and there. But it falls apart with the assertion found throughout scripture that God is good and loving, unless you are an angry person and you think God thinks the way you do and is angry too. In our first reading, Isaiah, speaking for the Lord God, promises that in a very little while, the deaf shall hear the words of the book. Out of the gloom and darkness, the eyes of the blind shall see. The lowly will ever find joy in the Lord, and the poor rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. In the Gospel, Jesus heals the two blind men because they ask him to. This does not sound like an angry God to me. Let's take a test case. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Francis Xavier, one of Ignatius's first companions. He was in Rome in 1540 at the founding of the society. And in 1542, he left Rome for India. From Southwest India, he made three round trips through present day Malaysia, Singapore and Borneo. He died in 1552, 10 years later, on a fourth trip and he, when he was headed to China. I've been to Kuching, the capital of Borneo. I've traveled by boat up and down the Sarawak River. I've visited Dayak longhouses and I've seen the Istana where the Brooke family lived. If you do not know the story of James Brooke and his family who ruled Borneo as the Raja, please look it up. It's a fascinating story. River travel and longhouses give us a feel today of what Francis Xavier must have seen 500 years ago. And my question to you is, did he undertake all this travel because a punishing God thought he should? Or did he hear an invitation from a loving God he had come to trust, an invitation offering him this great work? I vote for the latter because this is the God we encounter when we pray through the exercises. Unfortunately, this is not the God we always encounter as we listen to Protestant and Catholic leaders. Francis Xavier, Isaiah, and Jesus himself invite us into new relationship with the loving God who really is during this Advent season. You might want to check your own thinking and your assumptions about the God in whom you believe to be sure you're on the right track. Stay in touch with the Advent readings. 
stay in touch with the blessings and the gifts from this loving God that surround us.